Welcome back. Uh, we've got some more homework problems here. Uh, we've got an acid base uh, set of problems for practice. We've got that exam coming up and let's dive right in. Uh, turn the pin on and we'll get started. Okay, so this first one is asking to write a complete molecular and ionic reaction, so or equation rather. Let's go ahead and do this complete one. We've got this sodium bicarbonate, so you've got to remember what that is from your naming, right? And bicarbonate is the same thing as hydrogen carbonate, and that's going to be aqueous, right? We were told that's aqueous uh, sodium bicarbonate, and we're going to react that with nitric acid. Uh, that's HNO3, and that is also aqueous. That is a soluble compound, and we're going to, for right now, we're going to go ahead and assume it's a, a one-way reaction. And what do we get? Well. In this case, this is a, um, a very simple one. We're going to swap these guys out, and we're going to get um, essentially uh, through displacement, we're going to get sodium nitrate, right? Because we took the, the nitrate here and the sodium, and we're going to put them together and put the H and the bicarbonate together. And all nitrates are soluble, so that's going to be aqueous. And then the next thing, you're going to probably first attempt to write something like this. And that's um, basically by, uh, it's carbonic acid, right? You've got two hydrogens and a carbonate. Um, in real life, this doesn't stick around very long. Um, this is one of our gas forming reactions, right? Whenever you see carbonic acid, you should always cross this out and write it as a combination of water which in this case will be a pure liquid, and what's left over? Carbon dioxide gas, right? And there we go. So that's just something you gotta be on the lookout for. Now we're gonna convert this to the net ionic, right? Which means we need to break everything down. Um, it looks like it's balanced. It's worth a double check always to check and make sure everything's balanced. I got one sodium, one sodium, one nitrate, one nitrate, two hydrogens, and a carb carbonate, and then that converted there, so we are all balanced. So let's go ahead and break these up. Sodium is an aqueous ion, right? And we've got some uh, bicarbonate ion here, right? That's a nice little polyatomic. That's going to be aqueous. You know that nitric acid is one of your strong acids, so that's going to break up completely. And it's going to give you all of this on the reactant side. It will react to, this is another aqueous salt, you're going to have a sodium ion. I don't know why that arrow doesn't want to stay there, sorry. Um, put that down, and then we've got um, the nitrate. Again, that salt is soluble, breaks up into two components. And now you're going to look at water. Water is a pure liquid. It will not break up in any appreciable amount. So we will say that is a liquid. And carbon dioxide as a gas, it will not break up, right? It is not going to dissociate. So there we go. We've got all that down. Now we, uh, we kind of look at who's going to spectate, who's going to be a spectator and not do anything. Well, I see a sodium over here and a sodium over here. I see a nitrate over here. I see a nitrate over there. So it looks like the net ionic reaction is nothing more than this bicarbonate ion reacting with acidic proton, right, H+. Plus. And that's going to give us uh, water in liquid form plus some nice bubbles of carbon dioxide. And there we go. That is how you do it. You go from the balanced complete molecular all the way down to the net ionic. Very, very simple. Okay. This next one is really nice because it combines some of the new stuff with acid base with a little bit of stoichiometry. So. Uh, what we want to do here is think about calcium hydroxide, right, and that's a base, and then we've got nitric acid from above, and that's obviously an acid. So let's go ahead and write this equation. So we're going to write the complete molecular starting off. So we'll go calcium. Remember, calcium is a 2 plus charge, which means we need two hydroxides, and that's, um, whoops, I almost made a mistake. Look at that. Uh, Got to be careful. Got to read, right? Up here it tells us that's solid. You gotta be careful, sorry about that. Uh, we've got calcium hydroxide, that's a solid. And then we've got uh, some soluble, right? That's a solution. Anyway, nitric acid is always gonna be pretty much aqueous. So HNO3, that's aqueous. And a strong acid, strong base. It's gonna go effectively all the way there. And we're gonna get a little bit of calcium 
nitrate in this nice little displacement reaction, and that's going to be a sol uh, soluble aqueous salt, right? Uh, all nitrates are soluble, right? That's important to know. So that's soluble, it's aqueous. And what do we got left? We got, it looks like uh, hydroxide and H, that's going to give us, I think, uh, two units of good old water as a liquid, right? So there we go. Uh, we want to make sure it's balanced. I've got one calcium, one calcium. Uh, my hydroxides and whatnot are over here. Good. Oh, looks like I forgot to write my subscript to balance it. Right, nitrate is one minus, calcium is two plus, which means we're going to need two of that, which makes sense. So we got one, two, three, four, four H's, two O's over there. The nitrate. Yeah, we're good. That's that's balanced. So now we can start to break it up. Remember, that's a solid. We, we almost missed that one. We got to be careful. It told us it's a solid, so we do not break up solids. Uh, solids are not dissociated. So we got our calcium. We just write it as is, and we keep that solid. And then this is an aqueous strong acid, so we'll have two H pluses, right? And that's going to be aqueous plus uh, looks like two nitrates. That's also aqueous, right? And that's going to give us an aqueous salt. So we've got a calcium 2 plus. That's aqueous. And it looks like we've got two nitrates still. And that's aqueous. And then finally, the water, which is a pure liquid. We do not break up pure molecular liquids. There we go. Okay. So now we want the net ionic equation. That's the full or complete ionic. So uh, calcium solid. H pluses, oh, there's some nitrate there, some nitrate there. And so it looks like now um, we're all set. So we can say, okay, well, um, is that everybody that we can eliminate? I think so. So now we can just break this down uh, to what's left over. And that's our solid plus um, some nice acid here, right? So. We're taking that and neutralizing it, and we're going to get um, calcium 2 plus. At this point, I want to make sure to say that calcium locked in a solid is not the same as calcium 2 plus, so we could not um, break those up and uh, erase them from either side. They don't cancel if they're not exactly the same. And water. And so it looks like we've copied everything down that we need to make sure it's still balanced and, and we're all set. So there you go. Okay, now this next one's asking for a little bit of stoichiometry. It's not very tough. We can do that. We want to know the uh, number of grams of calcium hydroxide required to react with this much nitric acid. Well, again, I always want to start with what I'm given. So I say 0 0.1000. And again, for these calculations, I like to write moles. And in this case, I'm going to call to save time, I'm just going to call nitric acid A for acid. And that's per liter of acid, right? There we go. And I'm going to say that we have uh, 25 mils, which we can divide by 1,000 and save a little time, and say we have 0 0.0250 liters of acid. That means the volumes will cancel. Now we're at moles of acid. And if we go um, look back at our stoichiometry, right, we need two moles, right, two moles of acid for every one mole of I'm going to call this base. If you actually know, I'm going to go ahead and write it out. Um, so we have calcium uh, hydroxide here. And the reason I'm writing this one out is because I will need the uh, formula weight of that to actually get the mass conversion. So it's sometimes very helpful for me just to write the formula so I don't mess it up. And hopefully, I calculated that right from the periodic table 74.09. Uh, grams of that calcium hydroxide. Make sure you get the formulas right. And if I crank that all out with my calculator, I get something on the order of 0 0.0926 grams of calcium hydroxide. And that's the final answer. Three sig figs. I'm limited by three sig figs. Looks good to me. Uh, hopefully, I punched that right in my calculator. The next one says, calculate the grams of calcium nitrate produced from the reaction above. Well, that's easy enough. I'll just start with the same 
uh, material that I had, which was that 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 number that uh, what, 25 mils of the 0.1 molar acid. So I'll start with that. You could have also started with your final answer, uh, that that calcium hydroxide, and you would have been just fine. Doesn't matter. Um, got that. And again, we're going to say we have 0 0.0250 liters of acid. Um, that means the liters cancel. Uh, my stoichiometry here is very similar. I have two moles of that acid per every one mole of that calcium nitrate that is produced. Remember, that's a product. And for every one mole of calcium nitrate, we can look on the periodic table and determine that that's roughly 164.09 grams per mole of that calcium nitrate. And if we crank that out, our moles acid cancel and our moles of nitrate cancel and we're left with grams and I get something along the line of 0 0.205 grams of that calcium nitrate and that's my final answer and I think that is it so a uh, pretty short one I hope that's a good review before going into the next exam and uh, I'll see you soon